Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. You can support the show on a one-time basis, support.greatdetectives.net, using the Zelle app to box13 at greatdetectives.net, or by mailing in a donation to Adam Graham, P.O. Box 15913-15913, Boise, Idaho, 83715. But today our focus is on Patreon supporters, patreon.greatdetectives.net. By far the uh, most reliable uh, source of income for the program. Appreciate uh, the 180 plus people who uh, support the show on a regular basis. Uh, and you can do that for as little as $2 per month. And as one of our Patreon supporters, I'll happily send you a newsletter every month uh, detailing some of the things that are coming up on the podcast and giving you some heads up on uh, some of the future activities we're planning, as well as a personal update here and there. You also get to choose our summer series for the amazing world of radio, and you can sign up over at patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for today's episode of It's a Crime, Mr. Collins. The original air date, August the 19th, 19... uh, 57, and this is The Murder of the Fabulous Redhead. It's a crime, Mr. Collins. Surely is. After all, suppose you were arrested on suspicion of murder, and your husband was out chasing a beautiful redhead with a hundred thousand dollars. And you think you've got trouble, huh? You should be married to Greg Collins, the private detective. Yes, I'm Gail Collins. And I'll be back in a minute to set the stage for our puzzling crime. It's a crime, Mr. Collins. Well, if it isn't Mort Hall. That's right, Gail. And I'd like to hear all about this beautiful redhead. You men are all the same. Sure we are. Now, how about the story? Well, Greg and I were having our breakfast coffee. We do kind of a switch on the husband and wife routine at breakfast. Greg's hungry. He gobbles up pancakes and sausages and concentrates on his eating. Me, I bury my nose in the morning paper. Greg's business as a private detective keeps him so busy he doesn't have too much time for the news. So me, I'm the poor man's Walter Winchell. I tell Greg what's new. Mm. Well, go ahead, pal. Let's hear it. Your insurance all paid up, Greg? Hmm? Why? Your days are numbered. They're knocking off private detectives in this town like pins in a bowling alley. What? What did I get this time? The paper says your friend Tommy Brown was shot last night in his office. No, that isn't surprising. Mr. Brown was no friend of mine, Gail. I warned him. He was getting into some very crooked deals. He was looking for a woman named Nella Stevens, it says. Probably found it. Only somebody didn't like it, so they shot him. Who's Nella Stevens? I pass. I thought maybe she was somebody in the gossip columns or those silly magazines. You should know. You read them. Out of morbid curiosity, that's all. Anyway, you'd better let this be a lesson to you. Take me along on your murder cases. I'll keep you out of trouble. Yes, yes, you're very helpful. Your wife isn't a good detective, huh? Terrible. She good for anything at all? Mm, I doubt it. How about this? <clears throat> yes, now, now that you mention it, she does have talent along certain lines. While Greg and I were at breakfast, a man we'd never heard of, a Mr. Charles, was talking to a gunman who worked for him, a gunman named Johnny. They were in Charles' very expensive and lavishly decorated apartment. I'm telling you the truth, Mr. Charles. When I got there, this this private eye, this Tommy Brown, was dead. Johnny, doesn't it strike you as odd? Doesn't what? I hired Brown to find Nella Stevens. He was going to tell me last night where he'd found her. And then he was murdered. About the time you got there. You think I saw the killer? 
I don't know, my dear Johnny. I'm merely speculating. I didn't have nothing to do with it. I'm still looking for Nella Stevens, Johnny. How am I going to find her, Mr. Charles? A private detective did. You're as bright as he is. Yeah, he got two bullets in him for finding her. Yes, Johnny. And somebody might get bullets in him for not finding her. Me, for instance, Mr. Charles? You, for instance, my dear Johnny. I walk Greg over to his office, which is in one of San Francisco's newest skyscrapers. Figured I'd butt in on a case or two. Greg hates it, but me, I worry about him. I also worry about the women that parade into his place. The one we found in his waiting room, for example. I'm Lillian Burton, Mr. Collins. Oh, do sit down. Now, this is my wife, Gail. How do you do, Miss Burton? Uh, no, not here in the ante room. Uh, my private office, Miss Burton. Thank you. Uh, wait here, Gail. Uh, Gail, come back. I said wait here. Oh, did you? And, uh, well, perhaps Miss Burton wants to talk to me confidentially. Well, that's what I thought. Um, uh, read some magazines out here, chum. Uh, newspapers, uh, whatever you like. Okay. Say, here's something. Pershing says he has the Kaiser on the run. Where do you get these magazines? From your dentist? Uh, uh, what's on your mind, Miss Burton? I want you to find my sister-in-law. Why? So my brother can sue her for divorce. Oh, sorry, I don't get mixed up in divorces. But she may have been murdered. Well, what makes you think so? She's been missing for six months. That doesn't mean she was killed. Unless you have special knowledge. Now, don't start accusing me. I don't like any windows like that. I'm just trying to get the story straight. What's your sister-in-law's name? Nella Stevens. Oh, there we go. Nella Stevens is her maiden name. She's originally from Los Angeles. Why did you say her again? Her name was in the morning paper. Yes, very unfortunate. That private detective. Well, the fact that he was killed looking for her is hardly tempting for me. Oh, hear me out first. The divorce her fault? No, no, nothing bitter about it. My brother Gerald is young and, well, he's fallen in love with someone else. Well, could Nella have disappeared so your brother can't find her and serve her with the papers? Uh, is she blocking the divorce that way? Well, absolutely not. That's why I know something must have happened to her. Anybody else mixed up in her life? Another man, maybe? Not that I know of. She is uh, psychologically sound. Uh, no possibility of amnesia. Out of the question. Do you have any idea why the first detective hired on the case was murdered? None. You frightened. That's why you won't look for Nell. Well, I don't scare that easily, Miss Burton. But I do like to know who's holding what cards. You've got to take the case. I need your help terribly. Isn't there anything that will persuade you? And uh, what does Nella look like? She's five foot three, weighs 115 pounds, has beautiful red hair and lovely blue eyes. They say she looks like me. Lovely eyes and beautiful hand looks like you. Yeah, you're the modest type, I see. No, just telling you facts. That's what you wanted, isn't it? Uh, speaking of facts, let's face a very interesting one. <clears throat> the fee. I hope it won't be exorbitant. Stuntmen get a lot of money, Miss Burton, because their assignments might be fatal. You're asking me to walk the same road as a colleague of mine just walked, and he's in the morgue. All right. Name the figure. 5,000. Find her or not. Well, uh, would that settle it? Then you'd accept? Probably. Well, I'll dig the money up somehow, some way. It's a deal. Five thousand. Of course, if it could be less, even a little less... You're asking me to find a woman nobody's been able to locate in six months. She's very attractive. In spite of what you say, she's unquestionably involved with men. Some of them are obviously hoods. They just knocked off the guy who finally did find her. And you've no really valuable clues. Now, there'll be nothing less, Miss Burton. All right. I'll pay. Then you're on. Will you start immediately? Immediately. You're... Oh, you're a darling. I could just... Just kiss you. you. Oh. Was I interrupting something? Uh, uh, I hope? No, no. Just... just uh, she, she got excited, Gail, because I consented to take the case. <clears throat> Have you a pencil? I, I want to take down Miss Burton's number. I think you've already got her number. I came here to hire services, Mrs. Collins, not to indulge in second-rate wisecracks. You also did not come here to kiss my husband. Or did you? Here, I'll write my number on this pad. There. 
I'll, um, I'll call you the moment I learn anything, Lillian. Learn anything? Brother, if I hadn't come in, you'd have graduated with honors in about five minutes. I was talking about the case. Well, I wasn't. Isn't that odd? I'm very grateful, Mr. Collins. Goodbye, Mrs. Collins. Goodbye, Miss Burton. <laughs> Uh, sweet girl. Husband snatcher. Gail, you don't know what this involves. I certainly do. I listened on the intercom. A million people in San Francisco, and I have to find one redhead. It's like looking for a cheap apartment. I have a feeling I can clean up this case with one call. Excuse me. And I have a feeling you flipped. Just listen. Hello? Oh, uh, may I speak to Nella Stevens? This is Nella Stevens. This is the office of Greg Collins. Are you from Los Angeles? Yes. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. But don't you... Hello? Hello? Well, my fine, high-class private detective with a big problem. What have you got to say now? Well, it couldn't be the same, Nella Stevens. Lillian's been looking for it for almost six months. Maybe she wasn't trying very hard. She's living at the Beverly Arms apartments. Hmm? How did you know? Elementary, my dear Collins. I looked it up in the phone book. So that was that. We'd located Nella Stevens' first pop. But keep your ears pinned, friends. We'll be back in a minute with more of our story. Well, the obvious thing to do next was to go to Nella Stevens' apartment. So we did the obvious thing. Well, Greg... What does the nameplate say? Oh, it says Nella Stevens, all right, but it can't be the same one. What's the matter? It's not luck. Nobody home. Oh, well, let's try the bedroom. Greg? Yeah? Somebody hit this joint like a hurricane. What could they have been looking for? Same thing we are. Nella Stevens. They couldn't have expected to find her in any of these drawers. If you ask me, this was a conventional robbery. You talked to her 15 minutes ago. So what? Well, if this were a conventional robbery, then the burglar might still be... What happened to those lights? I don't know. Turn them on. They don't work. Now, the fuse must have gone. Now, don't move. That's good advice. Why don't you take it, too? Here, get that flashlight out of my eyes. Well, Craig Collins, the detective, right? Have we met? Not formal, no. I saw you in a courtroom once. You did real good. But you won't this time. Not with this dame. Which dame? Nella Stevens, the dame with you. I am not a dame. I am Mrs. Greg Collins. That must be fun. I could have more fun, pal, pushing your wise guy face Never in. mind that. It'll get us all in a jam. I didn't hear your name. Call me Johnny. Well, Johnny, we're looking for Nella Stevens, too. My boss would like to know that. Well, who's your boss? Mr. Charles. He's a very nice guy. You ought to meet him. In fact, you ought to meet him right now. Well, maybe I don't want to. Maybe you don't see this 38. We'll meet him. I love cordial invitations like that. All right, folks, step inside. Hey, quick, shoving, Johnny. Hello, Mr. Charles. And precisely what is this uproar about? It's just what the doctor ordered. Meet Nella Stevens, Mr. Charles. Nella Stevens? You don't recognize her? My dear Johnny, I told you Nella was a redhead. This lovely girl is not. Hear that, Greg? This lovely girl? I found both of them in Nella Stevens' apartment. Well, I'm extremely sorry. I didn't quite catch your name. The name is Collins, uh, Greg Collins. A renowned detective. I'm impressed. What were you doing in Nella's apartment? Looking. For what? I heard there was a vacancy. I wonder if we have time for these little ventures into irrelevant humor. Okay, so we'll leave. What is your interest in Nella Stevens? A client of mine wants to locate her. Perhaps we can join forces. I'm looking for her, too. Thanks, no. You're uncooperative, aren't you, Mr. Collins? Give me a crack at him, boss. He'll cooperate. Would you like Johnny to go to work on you? Sure. If he'll put down that gun. I'll take the gun, thank you, Johnny. Where's Nella, Mr. Collins? Mr. Collins, I'm not doing this for amusement. Nella Stevens worked for me until she disappeared with $100,000 of mine. 
They want it back. Want me to answer? No, never mind. Hello? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You have. Oh, splendid. Accept my apologies, Mr. Collins. What for? An error. It's been rectified. One of my employees phoned in. <laughs> Imagine. He just found Nella Stevens. Got the key to the office? Here. I'll turn on the lights. Greg! Look, near your desk. There's a woman lying on the floor. See where you are, Gail. I'll look. If she's asleep, don't disturb her. I couldn't possibly disturb her. She's dead. Oh, no. We finally found Nella Stevens. Why was she killed here? Remember when you spoke to her on the phone? You said this is Greg Conan's office. Well, she must have come down here to find out what was going on, and Charles was hoods were waiting for her. Oh, You're a hard guesser, Collins. I'd like to be your bookmaker. This is the second time you've snuck up on me, Johnny. I'm getting annoyed, you know. Now get that gun out of my face. I've been tailing you ever since you left Charles' place. That phone call was a phony. Charles figured when you heard we found Nella Stevens, you'd go where she was hiding out to check. Well, he's a bad guesser, too. Why'd you knock her off? Don't be an idiot. I just got her, you know that. Yeah, but how long does it take to knock a broad off and roll her for a dove? Give me the phone. Who are you calling? The cops. Forget it. It's a crummy idea. You got a better one? Yeah, I got a better one. <laughs> oh. Take it easy, Greg. Where's Johnny? He's gone. Coming back with Charles. I'd like to get Johnny sometime and he's not armed. Oh, don't try to get up. I already called the police. I didn't want to take a chance disarming him and come to you. A wild shot, you know. Now, look, why don't you go to the movies, hmm? I'd rather be with you. Oh, don't you have any shopping to do? I'd rather be with you. You're messing up the case, Gail. You're wrecking our marriage, Greg. Okay, but I'm not responsible. All right, come along with me. The phony. Greg, I mean... He sneaked to a phone booth on a pretense, contacted his pals over at police headquarters, and had them pick me up. They took me to headquarters. But I vowed then and there to fix Greg's wagon if it was the last thing I did. And I don't mean his station wagon. While I was filming and fussing in custody, Johnny was calling his boss. That you, Mr. Charles? Yes, Johnny. Will you hear this? The screwiest thing. Who do you think killed Nella Stevens? She's dead. Cops just picked up Greg Collins' wife. Oh, that is odd. You better kiss your hundred grand goodbye. Go on with the wind, pal. Yeah, perhaps you're right. You come by and see me, Johnny. What for? I'll pay you off. You didn't have to drive me to the airport, Mr. Charles. I'm delighted to do it, Johnny. It's the least I could do under the circumstances. Hey, wait, you made a mistake. Oh, did I? Yeah, you should have taken that left turn. <laughs> How stupid of me. Why are we stopping here? Well, something just occurred to me. Did it? Yeah. Johnny, who stands to gain the most from Nella Stevens' death? Greg Collins? Why do you say that? He could knock her off and grab the money? Incredible. Collins is a world-famous detective. He's turned down more money than that. Extremely ethical. Maybe his wife swung it, huh? Don't be absurd. Where does that leave? You, my dear Johnny. Me? What are you getting at? Suppose you committed the murder. You wouldn't have to split the take with anyone. Oh, come on, Do you now. have the money with you, Johnny, or should we drive somewhere and pick it up? Put away that gun, I... <laughs> Go! No, you, you can't! The price is stupidity, my dear Johnny. To live by violence is to die that way. So that was the second murder in this case. But don't go away. In just a minute, we'll bring you the climax of the case. Of course, all this time, I was in the Huskow. But my dear, treacherous husband was paying a nice, cozy little visit to Lillian Burton's apartment. Well, I'll be darned. Greg Collins. Hello, Lillian. Can I come in? Can you? Step right in. Tell me why all the attractive men are married. Skip it. We business. Where's your wife? 
Didn't you hear me? Tell me where she is. At police headquarters. I couldn't afford to let her go wandering around town in this case. Too many trigger-happy people about... Trigger-happy? Who? Your sister-in-law worked for a man named Henry Charles. Have you found her? Yeah. Where is she? My office. I'll get my coat. I'll be with you in a minute. Now, wait a second. I have bad news for you. She's ashamed to see me. Is that it? Oh, that's all right. It isn't that. What are you trying to tell me? She's dead. She's... Oh, oh no, no, that... Oh, that's awful. She wasn't the young innocent, Lillian. She was mixed up with a rough crowd, stole a hundred grand. Do you realize what you're saying? Sure. But that doesn't make sense. Nella was a simple, sweet girl. She didn't need Charles's money. I can't convince him of that. Well, you're wrong. There's a mix-up. There is a mix-up. What do you mean? You said she had beautiful red hair and blue eyes. Well? Her hair wasn't naturally red like yours. It was dark at the roots. First thing that struck me when I saw the body... And she was two inches shorter than you. What difference does that make? I know you haven't seen her in months, and girls dye their hair, but do they shrink? You, you've lost me. I, I can't seem to think straight. The shock, I guess, knowing Nella's dead. Nella Stevens isn't dead. But you just the said... The girl that... in my office is dead, all right. Not Nella. You're Nella Stevens. Oh, no, really, for trying to be clever. Not very clever. How'd you know she took Charles's money? I didn't say it was his, but you did. I just presume since you mentioned his name... That... It was too easy when Gail found your name in the phone book. I should have had the answer then. What surprises me is that Charles never thought of looking there. Sure he did, but it wasn't there when he looked. I waited until today when the new phone listings were published before I walked into your office. Very thoughtful. Who's the dead girl in my office? My double. She did it well, too. Well, now, if we're all through... We're not through. Got a license for that gun, Lillian? No, but it won't bother me. The police will think Charles killed you when they find your body. Want to make a deal? Talk. I'll get you a great lawyer. You could plead insanity. On what ground? Trying to get away with this. You'd have to be nuts to try it. Now put away the gun. These things go off sometimes. Kill anybody else besides your double? Tommy Brown, maybe? <laughs> Tommy Brown. He got wise, stumbled on the truth, and wouldn't listen to me. Acted like a boy scout, the way you're acting. Ended up dead, the way you will. Maybe not. You want part of the hundred grand, huh? Maybe. How much? Half. Huh? For what? Keeping my mouth shut. The heat to get to whoever kills me will be terrific. That's playing it your way. Now think of mine. I say nothing. Pin a rap on Charles. Get him out of the way. We're both clear. They'll never find out who got Brown. You talk too fast. I gotta think. Think of being in the clear. Think maybe... Don't get so close to me. I don't want the gun. You're not made of ice water after all, huh? Who could be? Have a look in the mirror. I thought you came here on business. I did. And... Well, I'll clean it up right now. Oh, my, my arm! Let me go! <laughs> Greg, are you all right? Yes, Gail. Get up, Lillian. Police downstairs, Gail? Yes, prowl car. Oh, I talked him into coming here. I had a notion you'd be making yourself a target. You dirty low Out down... the door, Lillian. Let's go see the boys. You didn't want a deal. Never did. I bet for an old stall. So what? We all do. Gail, I told you you'd come within inches of a bullet. That shot you fired. Lucky it went wild. Not as wild as I am, chum. Locking me up in the hoose scow, chasing redheads. Kissing this woman. A line of duty, pal. Oh. oh. Hey, what's the idea of kicking a guy in the pants if he just captured a killer? I'm your wife, right? Line of duty, pal. Line of duty. <laughs> Nella killed the girl in your office, Greg, right? But how did that help her? Well, once I told the police Nella Stevens was dead, Charles accepted it and would give up looking for her. He suspected Johnny of double-crossing him. You're guessing. I am not. I just picked up Charles and he confessed. Where's Johnny? Coroner's got him. Shot dead by Charles. So the reason Lillian came to you was to have you establish that Nella Stevens was dead? Well, certainly. Left her free to take a powder with Charles. Fine. So now you collect from your client and the case is closed. My client was Nella Stevens, alias Lillian. I just nailed up a homicide. She won't pay me a dime. That's what I like. A husband who's a good businessman. Makes money, protects himself. Takes care of his wife and home. Total profit on this venture, zero dollars, zero cents. One more wonderful case like this and we'll be bankrupt. 
You mean you love me for my money alone? There's something else? Come here. Great. Yes, darling? I don't care if you haven't a cent. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're a terrible businessman. Mm -hmm. Nothing matters. Except one thing. What is it, darling? Get a deposit on the next case. Cash. Don't go away. In just a moment, we'll be back with you. Well, folks, Gate and I hope you enjoyed our adventure, the murder of the fabulous redhead. Be sure to visit us next time for another puzzle in murder. For whether it's crime and romance, there you'll find Mr. And Mrs. Collins. Welcome back. This is another case that was done over on the Abbots, uh, and I think they do do a pretty good job with it. The accents are a little different, so you can tell that uh, they're not being done by uh, American actors, but I do kind of like the way they sound in this particular program. Now uh, we turn to listener comments and feedback, and Bill points out that when I wrote the description uh, for the episode, uh, The Burnt Copper Powder, I accidentally used Pat instead of Greg, uh, and, uh, reference to Pat Abbott. Uh, and he, uh, Bill goes on to say, I'm pretty much over this series, but we'll stick it out until the end. Gail's jealousy is ruining the show from me. There are ways to use this plot a device without being as over the top as Gale. I'd rather hear a version of the show with Greg doing first person narration along with dialogue. They could still use the title because it only references Mr. Uh, Collins. Thanks. Well, I, I do think that's a fair concern. And I think, you know, when you go back and listen to the Abbots, which featured Claudia Morgan, the character was kind of the same, but I think the way that Claudia Morgan played it was uh, a lot l less uh, in the vein that uh, Bill's complaining about. So it is down to Mary Disney's performance. Though I do agree Keith Eden is really good in this. Uh, you know, he's one of Melbourne's, or he was one of Melbourne's best actors uh, over radio. And he clearly knows his business. Thanks again for the comment, Bill. And I want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Max. Max has been one of our Patreon supporters since 